Hello and welcome. Today we shall be looking at entrepreneurship and innovation. That is GST 204. GST 204 is a 200 level second semester course. And this is the first class we are having in this particular course. Um, if you are watching this video and you have not registered for this semester, please, um, God will provide for you. Just try to do the needful. And if you have registered for this semester, I mean, course registration exam registration, and you're yet to get your TME bookings sorted out, please just know that we are available. Okay, you can use the number on your screen or use the link, the WhatsApp link in our description to reach out to us. You can also send us a mail. And aside from TMA, there's other things that you need us for. We are open to doing business with you. All right. So one of the things I'm going to be launching before the end of the year is our membership, our mentorship. And um, yeah, membership, membership. That is a mentorship club. Um, lots, lots of people have been reaching out to me for that. They just want to be in that space where they can always have me as, you know, someone they can always look up to. Well, that's interesting. And um, I'm looking at doing it in a very, very professional way, doing it on a large scale. So I have a lot of programs in that particular um regard you're already but this one is going to be massive so i'm working towards it expect that and when it is time don't shy away from subscribing for it and if you are a first time participant in any of my classes try to subscribe um to this platform subscribe to this youtube channel it's going to be a very very big part of our programming for this semester i'll be using this platform a lot a lot so i'll be using it a lot to deliver a lot of content um, especially when it has to do with academic content you know teaching and tutorial resources so subscribe and share with your friends um i am really really doing a lot of general courses as um as a, a way of you know connecting and giving back to most of us so if you actually want me to do more all right beyond this you can reach out to me privately and also if you want to support us maybe you feel like doing something here and there to keep the ministry moving you can still reach out we will be willing to work with you or benefit from you whatever it is that is all it is so this is the first time we'll be looking at this particular course and i'll be working with this summary now before we get down to business i want us to really take a, a look at the course like what are we supposed to expect now this course has quite a lot of modules so it is a very very big deal right need to have started reading it has nine modules okay now each of those modules some have three topics some have four some have five so you can see the first module has five topic that's there are five units underneath it the second has four making nine topics the third one has three that's 12 topics the fourth one has three, that's 15 topics. The fifth one has five, that is 20 topics. The sixth one has four, that's 29 topics. The seventh one has four, that is 33 topics. The eighth one has five, that is 38 topics. The ninth one has four, which is 42. So you have 42 topics, 42 whooping topics in this particular course material. In the first module where we are going to be starting you can see topics like an overview of definition of entrepreneurship and intrapreneurship so that is entrepreneurship and that is intrapreneurship 
a concept and theories of intra entrepreneurship, the entrepreneurship culture, brief biography studies of prominent Nigerian entrepreneurs and barriers to entrepreneurial practice. So these are some of the things that you are likely going to be hearing in today's class because our focus will be, you know, some of the topics that began the course material. So if you want to get the course material, I'm going to drop a link on the description of this video. So when you get to that place, you can download the school course material for detailed studies. All right. And I'm also going to drop a link to the summary just in case you also need it. All right. I specially prepared it for these kinds of meeting. All right. So in our course material, we have intended learner outcome. Intended learner outcome is like the objective, objective of every class. If we come to the first topic, for instance, an overview of the definition of entrepreneurship and entrepreneurship. You can see here introduction, then intended learner's outcome. Okay. So under internal learner outcome, you can see by the end of this unit, you should be able to. So that's the objective. Okay. Yes. So when we say ILO, it stands for intended learning outcomes. What are those things that you're expected to have at the end of the study? Then we have CBA. CBA stands for computer-based assessments, just like your TMA. Now, oftentimes, many people go into one business or the other without the business say, surviving. This is because of lack of understanding of how businesses are created. So, oftentimes, many people go into businesses or other, other, um, other, okay, other um, business venture, other entrepreneurial um, activities and. They don't survive, they don't succeed because they lack understanding of how businesses are created. See, we said how businesses are created, not how businesses are run. It is one thing to know how to run a business. That means somebody has created and established that particular establishment. Okay, somebody have created the organization and then you come in and um, work with the resources, <coughs> excuse me, with the resources that person has provided. That is one thing on its own. But for you to start from the scratch, okay, to build it up is always a struggle. Now, some people don't know how to do it and do it well. The word entrepreneurship stems from the French word entrepreneur. Entrepreneur, okay. Am I actually pronouncing this very well? Is subject to a lot of controversy. But I've always said it over and over again. What matters most is spellings. Okay? Yes, yeah, spellings matters a lot when it comes to all these um, terms, names and all. Okay? Just know how to spell. If you can spell right, then you're good. So however it's been pronounced, so whether it is entrepreneurial, or entrepreneurial or entrepreneur or enter whatever it is i am not uh, of french origin so i might not sound as legit as i'm supposed to forgive me but just look at the spelling and note it so that when the action examination you just do the needful type it okay All right, let's move on, move on, move on. The word entrepreneurship stems from a French word, yes, and that French word is entrepreneur. Now we have Putari. Putari observed that scholars have had not been in agreement in their definitions of entrepreneurship 
and chronicled the definition of entrepreneurship by various scholars. So what this is saying is that um, there has not been a universal um, general agreement on the definition of entrepreneurship. Okay, there has there is disparity when it comes to what entrepreneurship should represent. So different scholars, different writers, different groups sees it in different ways. Okay. So now we have um Cantillon who views entrepreneurship as self-employment of any sort. All right. So just please mind the names. So Cantillon, okay, in his work Seca in 1730, he's saying that entrepreneurship is self-employment of any So that means if you are the one that is, you're not employed, you're not engaged by another person to serve in their establishment for a living. Now, Cantillon views entrepreneurship as self-employment of any sort. In 1934, Joseph Scompita equated entrepreneurship with the concept of innovation and applied it to a business context while emphasizing the combination of resources. Joseph Scompita equated entrepreneurship with the concept of innovation and applied it to a business context why emphasizing the combination of resources so he equated entrepreneurship with the concept of innovation innovation obviously has to do with what creating all right and then they applied it to business context that is innovate there are some innovations that that are not necessarily for profits making there are some innovation that are not um wealth wealth generation oriented so this particular person is hammering on innovation and the innovation that is profiting all right yes now in 1934 as we have seen earlier, this particular man, Joseph Scompita, please see how they spelt the name, right? See how they spelt the name. That's how you need to type it, okay, in your examination, all right? If it comes as your TMA as well, perfect. Now, Penrose views entrepreneurship as the activity that involves identifying opportunities within the economic system. So Penrose is saying that what entrepreneurship means identifying opportunities. Opportunities, that means benefits, advantages you can grab, you can you can take, you can you can you can position yourself for, right? So these are what you call um, entrepreneurship, right? Opportunities within economic system. Now, Leibenstein perceived entrepreneurship as involving activities necessary as involving activities necessary to create or carry on any enterprise where not all markets are well established or clearly defined and or in which relevant part of the production functions are not completely known. So already we have seen earlier that different um what they call it different scholars have different view when it comes to entrepreneurship and we're beginning to see all the names so we can take your time to replay and replay so that you can get to digest some of these names and also try to read over and over because it's important that you know what each person is saying so this particular person lay based in he perceived entrepreneurship as involving activities necessary to create or carry on any enterprise where not all markets are well established or clearly defined and or in which relevant parts of the production function are not completely known. 
So it involves activity necessary to create or carry on an enterprise where not all markets are well established. Not all markets are well established. So in this case, all right, they said the markets are not established. That means even people that um that the the the, the goals or services are made for are not well known. All right. So in this case, you are the one that is to what to create. To create a system, all right, that will help that market become established, right? So it's also involved clearly defining, and it could be to define and, or it could be defined or, okay, in which relevant part of the production functions are not completely known. So in this case, the it's just very very simple to understand. When you are talking about entrepreneurship, you are starting from the scratch what is involved is not known what is going to come out of it is not known who you are going to be serving is not known all right so you are the one you are working on a blank canvas that is what entrepreneurship is all about so no matter how you you want to define it you will always find its roots back to that particular source now, another person, Gartner, conceives entrepreneurship as the creation of new organizations. So, organizations that are new, that are not existing before creating them. That is what entrepreneurship. Okay? So, we need to understand that. Okpara, in 2000, year 2000, defines entrepreneurship as the willingness and ability of an individual to seek out investment opportunities in an environment and be able to establish and run an enterprise successfully based on the identifiable opportunities. Opera defines entrepreneurship as the willingness and ability of an individual to seek out investment opportunities in an environment and be able to establish and run an enterprise successfully based on the identifiable opportunities. So that is Opera year 2000 for you. Mwachuku regards entrepreneurship as a process of seeing and evaluating business organized business opportunities, gathering the necessary resources to take advantage of them and initiate appropriate actions to ensure success. Mwachuku regards entrepreneurship as a process of seeing and evaluating to see and evaluate business or opportunities, gathering the necessary resources to take advantage of them and initiate appropriate action to ensure success. So you can see that this is also going the same direction. To see and evaluate. Evaluate has to do with examining opportunities, business opportunities, all right? So you see you as an examine, then you gather necessary resources. Resources could be money, could be people, could be land, whatever it is that will help you to take advantage of these opportunities that you have seen and evaluated. All right, and then you now initiate after you must have gathered resources, you now initiate action, deliberate action to see that what well, these advantages are being taken. All right, entrepreneurship refers to all the processes and activities involved in establishing, nursing, and sustaining a business enterprise. So, establishing is very, very important. No matter what, if you are an entrepreneur, you must be able to establish. Okay, so if you see yourself as an entrepreneur, what you need to work on is how to establish, all right? How to establish. And to establish means you need to have a first sight, you need to have a insight, you have to have depth, you have to have clarity, you should be able to see what other people are not seeing, you should be able to also examine, you should be able to test out what you are seeing, because sometimes you can see um, something and call it opportunity while it is not really opportunities, or you can see opportunities yes but you might not really have resources and um, tools to actually harness these opportunities and um, you know it might become a problem down the line so you need to take your time to look in depthly into these opportunities and see that it is something that is indeed profitable it is something that it that is going to work it's something that is going to be kind of, that can be sustained and of course the resources are available to you even if you don't have the resources you have connection, you have network um, and links to places where you can get these resources and, um, you know, actions, right? You must be willing to take the right actions that we actually bring these 
um, organization that you're about to create to life. So there must be that establishment. Then when you are of established, you need to also be there to nurture. When you start something, that thing takes time to grow. You just like a human being. When you give birth to a child, it takes a lot of care and attention for that child to move from one stage of their life to the next to the next until they come to a stage where you know without you they can be able to do one or two things so you should be able to understand that nurturing is important and aside from nurturing you should be able to sustain so if you get to a point say so you start making some level of um achievement you start getting some level of success you start making some kind of exploit you start doing well all right and then you need to maintain you need to sustain you need to retain you need to you need to you know to to keep that which you have achieved so you, if you get to that level where you have um won a lot of hearts you have gotten a lot of clients you should be able to keep and maintain them that is what we are talking about so entrepreneurship is very important you should be able to to to, to sustain okay to keep what you have gathered all right to keep it and um and be able to uh look for bigger things all right so if you don't sustain definitely what you have labor to establish and nurture might just be taken away from you now Peter reviews entrepreneurs as change agents change agents change and so entrepreneurs are change agents all right um ninth views entrepreneurs as individuals who attempt to predict and act upon change within markets all right and computer conceives the entrepreneur as the innovator who implements changes within market through the carrying out of new combinations such as introduction of new technologies of production organization of an industry and innovation okay then cancelon we have seen that name before right he conceptualized the entrepreneur as the agent who buys means of production at certain prices in order to combine them into a new product please he buys means of production means of production um could be raw materials land labor everything that's needed for as factors things that you can put together in order for you to create a product and mind you products can be goods products can be services okay in year 2000 the entrepreneur is defined as the one who combines various input factors in an innovative manner to create value to the customer with the hope that this value will exceed the cost of input factors thus generating superior returns that result in the creation of wealth that is what um, the quick mba in year 2000 came up with so for them entrepreneur is what defined or an entrepreneur is defined as one that person who combines various inputs and factors in an innovative manner so he combines it in a way to, to be able to create something new okay and this thing that is being created is something of value to the customer okay and this customer has the hope that this value will assist the cost of input so if you have invested maybe some um, a, a value of a million dollars all right in acquiring all the various costs of production by the time you are done producing what you are working on you should be able to get back something more than what you have spent so that so please you need to understand it is everyone that can gather things together and try to put it together mix it up to create something but it's not everyone that can combine resources to provide something of value that will yield a result greater than the input all right so that ability to produce something that you will be able to earn more than you spent into that uh, makes you entrepreneur so for me to be having this particular class with you guys okay i am investing i'm investing my time i'm investing my resources like data for me to create this material 
for me to be here is time. You know, my data is running. A lot of things. I have to do a lot to see that I bring this class out. Now, what am I going to gain at the end of the day? That's a big question. So what I'm going to gain should be more than what I'm spending. Now, you might look at it that I'm, I'm spending time, I'm spending money, blah, 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 blah. But before I came out to do it, I have seen something that was something that motivated me, all right, for me to say, okay, let me do this. You might be watching this video and you might not have paid me any money, all right? But that doesn't mean that I am not gaining anything. Because for me, the value that I, 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 have, I have placed on what I'm doing, okay, is both, it's in two ways, okay? There is an income value I am expecting from it, and there's an impact value. So there's a number of people I want to touch their life. I want to make impact. People that I want to, you know, I want to hear, speak in years to come. People I want to meet in some time I have down the line and um, hear them say, oh, the boss, you really, con you know, contributed immensely into my progress in this particular institution. All right, that is a very, very big plus. It's something that, you know, could even open bigger doors for me. That's impact. And also income, all right? As I'm doing this, somebody is watching this video and is saying, oh, this guy is really, really cool. This guy is really good. I want to work with him. I want to give him this and that, you know. Opportunities are coming. All right, and of course, there are some that will come to pay for me. My class, I say, Oh, this class, I want you to be my my tutor, I want to go further with you. All right, and of course, they will pay, they will pay me for that. So, um, you need to understand that when we say that the results of what you are doing should be bigger than what you have invested, it doesn't always mean that by the time you are done with it, okay, the impact will be seen immediately there are some some ventures you get into you get to see you know the impacts on the spot like it's immediately evident but there are some that takes time all right that takes time to actually mature so i just wanted to understand all these um dynamics but one thing you need to know is that as an entrepreneur you have this understanding you know what you want, you know what to do, and you are doing it. And mind you, sometimes as an entrepreneur, it is not everybody that will share in your vision. It's not everybody that will understand. It's not everybody that will connect to what you are doing. So don't live your life seeking validation from any quarters because they might not really come. They might not really come because your journey is peculiar to you. All right, it's peculiar to you. What people will celebrate is the result. When they see the impact you're making, they want to connect with you. They want to partner with you. They might even want to compete with you. All right, so just um, understand this. Okay, let's do a little more before we call it a day. Now, entrepreneurs or entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship, and um, entrepreneurs have been a point of interest to economists as early as 19, 1755, all right? And though the precise meaning of entrepreneur is the, is the undertaker of projects, James Stuart Mill popularized the term in England. So please, this name, James Stuart Mill, when you, when you, if you are an economy student or management science student, you know, you did a lot of economics courses or you are doing economic um, economics courses, you're going to be hearing that name a lot. So, he was the one that popularized the term entrepreneur, right, in England. Entrepreneurship was looked at as speculative activity. When they say speculative, speculative means something that has future value, something you are looking at, you know, in time to come and saying, this is what is going to become. 
That's what they mean by speculative, okay, speculative activity. Okay. Now, the economy sees an entrepreneur as someone who combines resources such as labor, materials, and other assets, introduces changes, innovations, and new orders for profitable and rewarding ends. That's the economist. Okay. I just spoke about economists now. So you can see that economists and entrepreneurship, they are very, very connected. If you did them um, ENT 101, ENT 102, and, you know, like you are in the Department of um, Entrepreneurship, you will see that most of the things that you are learning in management, economies, and the likes is what they are going to be teaching you here. Because as an entrepreneur, you, 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 you are like a leader. You are the founder. You are the innovator. Do you understand? You are an investor. You, you see it all. You are in that place whereby every part of the organization connects to you. Okay? And every part of the organization branched out of you. So what the administrator is doing is what you know. In fact, they are answerable to you. They are representing you. So definitely you have a very good understanding of what they are doing. Okay? What the accountant is doing is something you should have idea of because before the before the establishment becomes so big that you need to get an expert to start handling the finances you might have been doing it yourself as entrepreneur yes okay so when businesses start and it is not um yet established very well the owner is the one receiving all the money you know making all the payment and all and at some point you feel like i'm coming too busy to and I need to get somebody to take care of this, all right? He employs an accountant, okay, or finance manager, whatever that you want to, you might want to call um, that particular position, all right? And it goes on and on. At, at, the, at the beginning, you are the one that is going up and down, all right? Looking for people you can trust to work with, people that can come into your establishment and partner with you, support you, and work alongside you, okay to see that your vision comes to life okay if you get to a point that you feel like well i've grown and i have too much to worry about let some group of persons or somebody else be in charge of it okay so you will have somebody that will be in charge of recruiting you know bringing um people into the organization so they know every position in the organization and what is needed all right, so when it's time to bring somebody in, they know how to source for such people and how to bring them into the organization and keep them motivated to work. All right, so if you look at it very well, you see that the entrepreneur sits at this pinnacle of the business because he's the one that originated, he's the one that knew way before that business became something alive, something tangible that everybody can connect to. The entrepreneur already had the, 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 the map. With him or with her, do you understand? So, everything that you that you that you have been taught, or you are going to be taught, or you are going to be learning in all these areas, okay, that has to do with business growth, establishment, expansion, management, and all. You know, we always come in handy. So that is why you see that this course is very very world broad. You can even see the number of topics. I think this will be the first course I'll be teaching that we have over 40 topics like that's huge all right okay now I, um according to economic entrepreneurship and economic growth will take place in those situations where particular economic conditions are most um, favorable okay so according to um, this economy is i've seen that economic entrepreneurship and economic growth will take place in those situations where where particular economic conditions are more favorable. So there are various economic conditions, okay, um, that we're talking about here. Talk about tax, okay, talk about um, population. These are economic conditions, okay. Talk about immigration, uh, how people go in and come out of a particular society. 
you know, talk about social amenities, government policies, all these things are very, very important. So when you have any condition that is um, relevant to a particular business, right, favorable in a particular society, entrepreneurship um, ventures in line to that particular business will be very, very, very successful. Okay, so if I if I am in a particular place where education is a priority, our people are willing to learn, and there is enough support for them. Okay, to actually grow in terms of their knowledge, then. I now want to do a business, you know, in that line, a business that offers educational supplies or educational consultation, coaching, training, whatever it is. The economic condition is favorable because the market is there for me. I have potential clients or customers, you know, people that are going to need my services and are willing to pay. And I have enough support system. The government um, policies is quite favorable. They are going to support me and, you know, license me to operate without, you know, much difficulties. So for that reason, any entrepreneurship um, innovation in that particular line will actually thrive now it is not everything that we thrive in that society there could be other things that you know that are not really favorable or that are not really um that are set up in that society which if you want to delve into you might meet a lot of resistance you might need to work extra hard that is why you see that there are some kind of businesses that look like it tries in some regions and in some other places. Nobody talks about it, okay? Because the conditions varies. There's a kind of businesses you bring to Nigeria, and it will sell because of what our nature, okay, our economic climate, all right. And there are some kind of businesses you want to bring in. You'll be discouraged because the economic condition does not favor. So, for instance, you want to bring a business into Nigeria that that you know you'll be needing a lot of. Um, electric power, you know, you might be discouraged because we actually don't have stable power supply in most part of the country. And even when it's available, it's very expensive. Okay. If you want to start using generators and other um, provisions, you might get to spend way, way, way uh, more than necessary so if there are other places that you know where you can get to and get most of these things more easily all right you might want to go there and establish that particular business there are other kind of business strife in this country okay judging from the fact that we are diverse okay we are we are much in population and um, there is a lot of things that is not really working um, well in this country that actually provides opportunities for people to, you know, to fill in different kind of loopholes. So just talk about education system now. A lot of a lot of um, a lot of loopholes, a lot of a lot of issues going on in our educational system that somebody that has the knowledge, someone that has understanding can come in and take advantage of these problems that is around us and then use it to create a profitable um, business venture. Because the truth of the matter is that as far as you have people, all right, they have needs, all right? And when the, when the society is, is such whereby the needs cannot really be provided or are not being really provided because, um, because the provisions are really limited, okay? It opens doors for anybody that can go the extra mile to 
provide it. Okay, let's use a very good example. We are in a situation whereby we have refineries which are and they are not working. Okay, the refineries are not working, and now we need our refineries to be working because you know selling our fuel outside and bringing it back to the country is actually straining us, impoverishing us, and all. So well, we need to start refining our own crew so we can be selling it out. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, somebody saw that as a loophole, as a lapse. Excuse me. <coughs> and is trying to build a refinery. If that person builds that refinery, don't you think the person is going to become, you know, excessively wealthy? Because this is something that we need. But for some reasons, it's not being provided. Okay? Now, you have taken that extra step. You have spent and done everything, you know, to provide that needed service or product. You are going to benefit from it. Okay? Because the people to sell it to are available. All right? So, you just have to have this understanding. Okay? Understand what you want to do. Understand the impact it's going to make on people and understand those that these things are made for, okay, and see that you can reach them, all right? Yes, you can reach them. And then there could be a problem of you reaching out to them, knowing them, understanding them, and then them not being able to pay you what we actually, you know, make your effort worth it. That can become a problem. It happens to me a lot. There are some things I want to do and i look at the space i find myself and the people around me they really cannot afford to pay me for this so if i'm going to be providing these services then it means that i should be ready to you know be doing it for a loss or be doing it with other things as my motivation like it is if i'm doing it because i want to just make money out of it okay then I will not because people will not be willing to pay me enough based on what the effort I'm going to be putting in. All right. So it's either maybe I am looking at reaching out to people outside the space I I have. Okay. So maybe that's, that's why you see some people, they produce some goods and they are trying to model and build themselves in such a way that they can attract, you know, external um clients international organizations okay because their immediate circle do not really have what it is these people are consumers okay they need what you are offering and they are willing to get it all right but they don't have the resources all right to purchase it or to purchase it in a way that you will be able to to gain profitably you know gain massively from that particular thing so because another problem so you just have to just sit down and do all this analysis very, very well so that you will know what to do and how to do it part-time. All right? Now, economic incentives are the major drive for entrepreneurship at entrepreneurial activities. Economic incentive, that is to say monetary um, um, benefits and the likes, all right? So wealth acquisition and all. Economic incentives remains the major drive for entrepreneurial activities and according to Pa Panic and J.R. Harrison. Economic incentives are the main drive for entrepreneurial activities. So according to G.F. Pa Panic and J.R. Harris. So these people are saying that, you know, the major drive for economic activities is, or the major drive for entrepreneurial activities is economic incentives. So when there is no incentives, okay, there might not be entrepreneurial Activities. And in some cases, okay, the entrepreneur, the um, economic incentive might not be a situation of drop and receive immediately, as I said earlier. It could be something that will mature over time. So you see some people doing some things, okay, purely not just because of the income, but also the impact and influence they are going to what make the influence they are going to be able to build. Okay, the impact they're going to make in the life of people, which then on the longer run will create income. 
for them. All right. So that is the much we are going to be taking today. If this particular class has been a blessing to you, let me know in the comment section. So by this time next week, we'll be looking at the continuation. So just know where we stopped and keep it a date. Um, keep a date with us. Remember to share the class with others. Invite all your friends to subscribe to the channel. And of course, don't forget to start booking for your TMA. All right, it's no last minute rush, not the one that when it is um, a day to, for TMA to close, I'll start receiving them on all DMs. All right, make your provisions, make everything, make your moves now. Now, so when the thing starts, okay, I will just sit back and be doing what I should so that you can go about your exam preparation okay all right okay